Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Michael, and I got Dwayne with me here today. How's it going, guys? And he's gonna be teaching me and you how to set up the Lincoln Electric 140 MP welder. So, what do I do with all this stuff? We are actually setting this welder up for flux core. So you have your regulator and your actual cord for it. That we can set aside. The things that we're actually gonna need today are gonna be your gun and your lead, and then you also have your ground lead and your ground clamp. These welders also come with two different spools of wire. This one is your flex core, and this one is a solid core wire designed to run with gas. So this one, again, we're not running gas, so we don't need it. We also have a few different tips. This tip, comes on the gun already straight out of the package. And then you also have this black little tip. This one is what we're gonna be using for the flux core. Right now, for safety reasons, we have our welder unplugged. We will plug it in once we get everything hooked up to the machine and are ready to run our spool. Awesome. So open up the side. These are pretty small spools that come with it. These machines, they actually come with this little adapter in there, and that's for running the larger wire spools in the machine. Mm -hmm. So all you do is loosen up this wing nut, and then there's a little spacer, plastic spacer behind your wing nut. You pull that off, pull that guy off. Cool. Set that, we'll set that aside. You always wanna make sure when you're put, getting ready to put your wire on, is what direction your wire is gonna be in the machine. You want your wire to come up over the spool and lead directly in to your drive wheel assembly. So always just look at your wire before you put it in the machine, because I've, I've done it when I started, uh, putting it in backwards and it's all underneath and it just gets bind up. So always double check and just make sure what direction you're putting that in. And then you'll put your little plastic washer. There is a line cut in the shaft itself. So that little washer will actually only sit there one direction. How tight should I tighten this? Uh, I just kind of loosely it. tighten it. So it just kind of rotate it up. Yeah. Cool. You don't, you don't want to over tighten it because the spool will actually catch and it will mess up your welds as you're welding because it will actually hold the wire back. So you want it snug, but not, don't wrench on it, it or anything. It needs to actually be able to, to rotate. Exactly. Now we're gonna get our lead going. Unwrap this guy. Okie dokie. You actually have two connections, as you can see. This little connection is actually for the trigger itself. This, this sends the signal from your trigger into your drive wheel, and that's what actually sends that signal to get, actually feed the wire. This actually goes into the machine, the wire goes in through the smaller hole in the back, and then your gas will actually come in to play uh, on this top line up here, so. All right, so where am I putting this thing? So this, You'll stick the main section mm -hmm. right there, and then your trigger lead goes down there. Okay, that makes sense. So there is a little lock nut on the inside. Yep. Always make sure you're loosening that up. The lead is actually kind of stepped a little, so you might have to loosen it, push it in, loosen it again, push it in, but make sure that lead goes all the way in and butts up nice and firm. Should be good. It's all the way in. Yep. Tighten the nut. Yep, tighten it back here. Okay. And then we'll get this guy plugged in. Now the little guy, you don't want to force, so there's a couple little prongs on it, and you want to be very careful with those prongs because they can break off pretty easily. So don't try and force it in. If it's not going in, try and rotate it. Yeah. When and I, just wait for it to kind of sink in. When I just spun it, it definitely just kind of clicked in really nicely. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, this machine is actually a very capable machine. It's, you can run a lot of different processes on it. 
Um, inside on the door, there's a nifty little diagram that will actually show you how to set up your machine for whatever weld process you're going for. We're gonna run this lead right mm -hmm. here all the way to the first. Perfect. I believe it's the negative, right? Yep. Looks like that. Plug we'll, it right yep. into the negative. We'll plug okay. that guy into the negative first. Okay. And then we'll run our ground lead after that. And this thing just kind of plugs on in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's got there, a little tooth. There's a little tooth. You'll just line that tooth up, push it in, and then turn it clockwise, and you'll feel it lock into place. Cool. So now we'll go to our ground clamp. So we have our clamp and our ground lead. So what we're gonna wanna do is take this guy, we'll run it up through, and then just hook it up to the nut. Perfect. Pop this guy through here. Yep. General rule of thumb, just put it on the easiest way it wants to go. Cool. Perfect. For safety reasons, always make sure that either you unplug your ground clamp or do your ground clamp after the fact. As you can see, we actually have our ground clamp just sitting on the table. That means if, as we're feeding this, if our wire comes down, hits the table, we make a hot connection. So, oh, that would just be a fun for, surprise. Oh, yeah, it's great time. Now that that's unplugged, we can feed the wire first. So, okay. undo the tensioner on. Oh, yep, cool. There you go. How do I do that? So, you Is just it... pull it straight back. Cool. There you go. Okay, cool. So, the top drive wheel pops up, and now you can actually feed your wire in. So, on your drive wheel, this lower one, there's actually two different slots on that wheel, and that's for different sizes of wire. Um, you can also, oh, here. yeah, you can also get different drive wheels with four different sizes of wire. So uh, this one is set up for uh, 0 0.030 wire and 0 0.035 wire. How would I switch it? So all you I gotta to. do is this little tensioner you undo that bolt, that whole drive wheel oh, straight cool. off. And you just flip it around, it's got two yep. little grooves on it. Another thing to always keep an eye on as you're welding is, normally I'll do it when I change out my wire, but take a look at the drive wheel and take a look at those grooves. Make sure that they're nice and clean, not a whole bunch of like gunk Build up. just built up in there. Because if you have an excessive amount of dirt or anything in those grooves, the wheel won't actually grip onto the wire itself and you'll start having feeding issues. So. Makes sense. Okay, Always cool. Always make sure you're keeping an eye on that. I turned it a bunch. Which side are we on? Uh, it should be the 0 0.030. 0 0.035 or 0.025? Uh, I guess it would be 5. Okay. And it's also got a little tooth on it. Everything on this yep. has a little tooth. So side that you want to use should always go against the back of yeah. your drive assembly. Tighten this guy on. Yeah, definitely, yep. I can see it makes a perfect little track between. Yep. Cool. All right, so now we will undo our wire from the spool. Always keep an extra hand on your spool and keep tension on your wire. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want that wire to come undone and it's a nightmare to get back onto the spool especially with the flux core wire. Oh yeah. It, it doesn't like to play nice, so I always can, keep an extra hand on there. I can feel tension. it, pull them back. Okay, so what do I do with this uh, okay, bent so end? You always want to cut any kind of bend or break out of the oh. wire. Got these trusty cutters. So always make sure that your wire is as straight as possible when you're trying to feed it in. All right, the, and then I'm putting it through this? Yep. Cool. Straight through there, it'll go over the bottom drive wheel and then into your gun assembly. And just take your time, guys. Don't 
Don't force it. If you feel any kind of tension or it feels like it's snagging on something, just stop, pull back, check your wire, make sure there's nothing on the tip, make sure your wire isn't bent, anything like that. Um, if there's burrs or anything on your wire as it's going through your your gun, it will actually ruin the inner shielding. Um, so always make sure that you have a nice clean wire. I normally will push about four to six inches into the actual gun assembly itself, just oh. to make sure that I get past all of the connection points and, and actually it. into the inner shielding. Don't be shy about cutting a couple inches if you need. There we go. Perfect. Is it okay. Going in. Yep, it's gone okay. through. I see what you mean about the spool. It's getting a little wild. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot. So. <laughs> All right, so I got the wire fed. Okay, so as you keep tension, you're gonna pull that top drive wheel down. Okay. And then the tensioner screw, you're just gonna push straight right up over up. it. And Perfect. that locks it in place. The tensioner screw, there's actually a diagram in there too. Mm -hmm. It shows each kind of wire and what that should be set at. So always check that diagram and we'll double check it, make sure we're set at the right tension. Yep. So I see flex core wire should be one to three. It kind of shows right here, that's pretty cool. Yep. And it looks like we're right at the three mark. Okay. So it should be good. All right. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have our wire started in there, we are plug in the machine and okay. start feeding it through our gun. And again, we have our ground unhooked just for safety purposes. Wait for you, you'll hear the fan, everything kick on. Oh yeah, Give I can it feel it. Give a couple it. seconds. Okay, so now I'll have you take off this nozzle and the contact tip. Okay, and just twist off? Yeah. Cool. Just unscrews and I'll take that guy. There you go. Again, this is for running gas. We're running flux core, so we don't need it. That guy. Perfect. So now I always take both of these off. I always take the contact tip off because the wire sometimes will get kind of beat up right here oh, on the back sense. side. Squeeze the trigger. Oh. Now I always, anytime that I'm feeding my wire, I always leave my door open mm -hmm. and just watch the wire feed through. One, I can make sure that my tensioner is set correctly, because uh, you can see if it's, you can see those little wheels just spinning and not really pulling stuff. And two, I'm also making sure that my tension on my spool is set correctly. So now Getting we there. just hold it until you see it come cool. out. Cool. All right. Perfect. So it's coming through. Now we can put our contact tip back on. Awesome. And then we're gonna use that cap. Awesome. So again, on. like I said before, we're not running gas. All its job is, is to protect the openings for the gas mm -hmm. on the gun itself. Flux core, it spatters a lot. There's a lot of spatter that comes around and you'll see it on your gun as you start welding. So you always want to protect those those gas openings as much as possible. Cool. And this tip gives you a lot more visibility when you're welding. So it's a nifty little little feature. Awesome. Yeah, it's very sleek. It still works. Okay. Awesome. So we'll trim down our wire. Cut some of it off. Now we can now that we got that ran, we can turn our welder back off. So now that uh, we had the machine off, we can hook up our ground lead back to the machine. Okay. Perfect. Cool. All right, so that's it? Yep. Now we're all set for running flux core. So. Awesome. Well, that was pretty simple. When you open this thing in the box and have everything separately, <laughs> it's kind of intimidating, but we made it. Awesome. Well, thanks again. No problem. My pleasure. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them down in the comments, and we'll catch you in the next video.